Hello and welcome to another Syncraft Scenario Tutorial. I'm Abel, Product Specialist at Zeiss. Today we're going to run through an important feature in Syncraft Scenario called Full Manual Lens Calibration. So before we jump right in, what is a lens calibration and why do we need it? For tracking the camera and doing a cam bar offset, we need to know the characteristics and data of the lens being used, especially how the lens changes when the focus, iris and zoom barrels are adjusted. The lens calibration describes the process in which the FIS data, general focal length and distortion characteristics are calculated within Scenario through a step-by-step -step procedure. Scenario uses this data and passes this information to a render engine simultaneously with the tracking data. Without the information about the characteristics and behavior of a lens, the tracking is inaccurate or even incorrect. It will also cause warped or badly distorted graphics on your final composite. You must therefore calibrate the lens to get your tracking up and running. Scenario will guide you through this process. In the case of a Zeiss lens, it is simply plug and play with our system. You just select the Zeiss lens from the drop down list and you're ready to jump to the next steps. On the other side, for the use of third party lenses, we have two ways of getting them into our software. We have lens calibration templates and the full manual lens calibration that I mentioned before. So let's take a look. Using lens templates are quicker in achieving final results compared to doing a full manual lens calibration. In Scenario, we have a drop down list of calibrated lens templates that you can simply select and start with the fine tuning process. Here, you adjust the selected lens template to your specific lens that is mounted to your camera. This process consists of manually adjusting the distortion of the lens to match the characteristics of your mounted lens. If the lens you are using is not part of the template list, Scenario also allows you to import a calibrated lens file from another Scenario system or a former NCAM system. If you have no calibrated lens file to hand, then you need to do what we call a full manual lens calibration, which I will show you in this tutorial. Unlike a lens template, which we can fully handle within the software, here we need to prepare some hardware and additional tools. What do you need? Of course, the camera, lens and scenario setup, as you can see here. And for a stable and practical position of our camera, you'll need a tripod with a plate or rods that are mounted to it. This is so we can change the position of the camera along the center axis. In addition, you need a lens encoder or follow focus system to get the lens data translated into the software. Also, as a reminder, if you're using slash I or LDS, you must have external encoders mounted as part of this calibration process. You'll also need a tape measure and two C stands or something similar. During this calibration process, you'll also need the charts that are provided with your scenario kit. On this lens, we have the external encoders from the scenario kit. And of course, you can use any of the supported encoders that we provide. For example, the Tilter, Preston and C-Motion are all viable options. Before starting with the calibration, let's talk about how to set up the hardware. So ideally, you would have around 10 meters of space to do this procedure. This 10 meters of space would be between the camera and a wall or a static object within your space. You want to put the cam bar above the main camera with no rotation and facing forward in the same direction as your main camera. You will want to ensure that it is leveled. You can do this by aligning the cam bar sensor with the main camera sensor. You'll want to put the camera on a tripod or mounted in a way that allows you to easily pan and tilt. Finally, you'll want to ensure that the environment you're in has some good natural features within it. For instance, you wouldn't want to do this calibration whilst facing a green screen or a blue screen. With the hardware and setup complete, we can now jump into the Scenario software. So we start off in the Equipment tab. Here you add your camera setup as always. Make sure that the recording format and other settings match your camera configuration. Now you have the camera selected, you simply click here to add your new lens. As you can see, this has changed a bit. You can now select between VLP, 
lens calibration template or manual calibrated lens. In the left corner is the button for importing a lens file from another scenario system or a previous NCAM system. But for this setup, we'll start from scratch. First, you select the type of lens, non-zoom, zoom or static. I'll select zoom for this first lens calibration. Then you just give it a title. Type in your lens manufacturer, series and then model. Everything that you type is completely up to you. It just helps you identify your lenses once they've been added to your database. After hitting create manual lens calibration, Scenario immediately jumps to the lens calibration menu. At the top, you can see all of the steps that are needed during this process. We have encoder mapping, nodal point, center shift calibration, primary calibration points, cam bar offset, set zero point, and refine calibration. We start with encoder mapping. Here you see three bars, each representing one parameter of the lens. So focus, zoom, and iris, which are fed in via the encoder cable used. In the case of a prime lens being used, the zoom or focal value will be input manually. Here we teach scenario the markings of the actual lens. When you rotate your lens, the encoder will pass this data and you will see the change here on the bar. First, we verify the lens encoder functionality. To do so, we look at the values and slowly rotate the lens barrel from hard stop to hard stop. Try to cover the whole range of motion at least two times. At your minimum object distance, the encoder must be at zero, and when at infinity, it must be at 100. This is particularly important if you're using SynCraft external encoders, as they may need inverting or resetting to make sure they are correctly synced with the lens movement. At the top, you can switch between metric and imperial measurements, and here you can invert the encoder. Let's start with focus mapping. You'll need to map the start and end points of the focus range, Scenario interpolates between the points that we add. So it's up to you how many points you add at this stage, but we would recommend doing all of the focus markings that are on the barrel. So let's rotate the barrel to zero and enter the first value that is shown on our lens. Now I'll rotate a bit further and enter the next value. I'll repeat this process until we reach 100. For the end point that represents infinity, we recommend doubling the last engraved value that is shown on the lens. This will ensure that it is high enough for the render engine to display correctly. So in our case, we have 15 meters engraved on our lens. So I'll enter 30 meters as our infinity value. After creating a good number of points, you can double check your values by rotating your lens between two of your created points and compare the values that you see on the lens itself. When finished with the focus, we do the same for our zoom values. It's essentially the same process. You just rotate the lens to the marking, add the point and enter the value. So we'll start at the lowest value and then work our way through the zoom lens. When mapping our zoom values, it is important that we input every focal length that is marked on the lens. Last, we do our iris. Now mapping the iris is not an essential part of the software and this calibration. However, if you need the iris information to be sent onto your render engine or a third party tool, you can do the iris mapping in the same way you did the focus and zoom. So now having completed our focus, zoom and iris mapping, we can move on to our next step. Next, we determine the nodal point. This is a point on the optical axis of the lens where the parallax of the image remains unchanged when the entire camera and lens are rotated around this central point. This graphic makes it a bit easier to understand the nodal point and how we determine it. To get the nodal point, you place two C stands in a line in front of the camera, one closer and one further away. Align them with the crosshair in the user interface so that the closer stand obscures the one that is further away. Now you pan across until the two objects are at the edge of the frame and you'll see that they start to drift apart from each other. By moving the camera on the depth axis, in our case further away from the stands, you see that the distance between the two is getting smaller. Repeat this until you find the point where both stands are aligned. 
Now the camera and lens are both rotating around one point underneath the lens. This is your nodal point. To figure out the value of that nodal point, you simply use your tape measure and measure from the tripod center axis to your camera sensor. You can now input this distance as your nodal value. For a zoom lens, you need to do this process twice, one for its minimum and one for its maximum focal length. Next, we have the center shift calibration. Here, we determine and compensate the offset between the optical axis of the lens and the center of the camera sensor. This is designed to remove any drift that can happen on the lens when zooming in and out. In the case of a prime lens, this step will be skipped. So you look for a specific target within your environment and then you zoom fully in on the target and then fully out. If the target and the overlay are shifting, you can adjust it until it aligns correctly. This step is used to determine the distortion and focal length of the lens. Here you see the graph that represents the set focus values in relation to the zoom. This graph is a bit different when doing a prime lens, but the logic remains the same. These are the calibration points that need to be completed. And these points are the recommended ones from the software. You can add more if needed, but depending on the lens, it is sometimes easier to do this in the refined calibration step. We recommend doing all of the points that are highlighted on this graph. When rotating the lens barrels, you see the graph arrow changing its position. So as we approach each point, we'll use the calibration chart for this step. We'll begin on this first point here and hit start. Now we hold the chart in front of the lens and click the take photo button. Make sure that you hold the chart at a slight angle so that it is not completely flat to the lens. This will provide more accurate results. The software calculates the distance between the QRs which you can see with the red marked dots on each corner. The last two points are doable with the lens we're using here, but in case of a tighter lens, it can sometimes be difficult to read the chart. For this, we've added a button right here that allows you to skip these points. After we've done all of the points, we can move on. As you can see, there's still a huge gap in the lens file, but we will fill this in later. So let's go to our cam bar offset. Before we start with our cam bar offset, I just want to highlight again that we need to mount the cam bar on the main camera with no rotation, completely leveled and facing the same direction as our main camera. We can't do a good cam bar offset until we have a good lens calibration. And by removing as many deviations as possible, we make sure that the cam bar offset is not unnecessarily difficult. Don't worry, the system is designed to cope with any small rotations, but the straighter the cam bar, the better. Let's do the cam bar offset now. Now we measure the distance between the cam bar and the main camera sensor along the Z and Y axis. After measuring, we enter these values into the user interface and then do the cam bar offset procedure. We then rotate the camera towards the chart and press start detection. If you've already done a good cam bar offset for a previous calibration, you can skip this offset, which will make calibrating multiple lenses much faster. The two camera streams will now be aligned. So let's rotate the zoom barrel until we're at the widest point of the lens. You will always want to do your cam bar offset at the widest point, as this will improve the cam bar offset accuracy. So now that we have our cam bar offset and our values, we can move on to the next step, which is set zero point. For this step, you must place a calibration graphic in our environment. This is done by aiming the camera at a point in our space, like aiming a scope at a target. This zero point acts as a reference that we'll use to refine our lens calibration in the next step. You need to measure the distance from the cam bar sensor to the zero point that you selected. Enter it here once you have your measurement. Once this is done, a grid will be displayed that is aligned to the camera and stuck to the point that was chosen in the step before. So now, when you pan or tilt the camera, 
the grid should stay in a fixed position around that zero point that was selected. As you can see, when I pan further to the edge of frame, it starts to shift. We will fine tune this in the next step. Now we're on our final step. Here you can see all of the calibration points that are available to edit. You need to go to each point and check them individually by doing pans and tilts with the camera. You can observe the movement of the zero point to check that it sticks in position. If the grid and zero point sticks to the set position, you can move on to the next one. If you see that the grid is sliding or not distorting correctly, then you can adjust it over here. When I'm happy with this calibration point, I can save it and move on to our next point and repeat the same process. If I zoom in, you can see we reach a point in our graph where there is no calibration data. The grid and the zero point will shift quite a lot because there is no reference point here. You will want to check this point on infinity first. Then go across and add a new calibration point there. Adjust this and then save once happy. This will now remove the shift on our zero point and lock it back into its position. Repeat this for the rest of the points. Remember, on the last two points, we didn't use the calibration chart. So these will be estimated using the encoder mapping we previously completed. You can see that the distortion values are left at zero. So again, adjust this manually and save. Come across, make a point, adjust it and save. Repeat until all of the shown points are finished. With these points now complete, we can check through all of our calibration points and then we can also add additional calibration points and fine tune them accordingly. You can also hit the April tag calibration button and this will allow you to use the chart again within a pop-up window. And finally, when we go to the center point of each zoom row, starting at the top, we might still see some shift in our zero point and grid. So we can add another point here for more accuracy and then repeat this process all the way down our zoom. Once complete, hit finish and your lens calibration is now ready to use. Once the lens file is saved, you can reuse it anytime you load up this configuration or you can export it and then import it into another scenario system. For more information, please visit our website. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial.